Well, hi, everybody. I'm Don Stewart, and welcome to another edition of Breaking News for this Sunday, the 30th day of June 2024. And it's really crunch time for the United States of America right now. The reactions about the horrific job Joe Biden did on Thursday night uh, are coming in from all around the world. Mockery from China and Russia, really concern, big concern from our allies and denial still in many Democrat circles. Uh, in fact, we have fake news taking place. NBC had a story yesterday that broke that supposedly Biden is going to meet with his relatives and decide what he's going to do. And that turned out not to be true. And so we're just in a state of confusion here in the U.S. The Democrat Party doesn't know what to do because all of the big names are afraid to speak out and say what's on their mind that Biden must leave. And so our story is going to revolve around that. The reason is the United States is the only, well, we are a superpower, but we've lost our superpower status in the world. And that fits with what the Bible has to say, at least as we've talked about this for years. In Ezekiel 38, 39, when there's a last day's invasion of Israel, the U.S. is nowhere to be found. No nation is anywhere to be found that will help Israel out when Russia leads this coalition in the last days. And that by its absence, it shows the United States, for whatever reason, is not a player. Well, we're seeing this happen right now. Again, like we always say, and it's sad to say, our enemies don't fear us, our friends don't trust us. And the rest of the world think the rest of the world thinks we're irrelevant. All right, let's look at the stories. Again, none of this is unexpected either. So the big question we have now is what's Biden going to do? Okay, headline number one: World reaction to U.S. presidential debate, mockery from China and Russia, concern from allies. This is from Fox News. America's adversaries just didn't think President Biden got pummeled by Thursday's debate. They claim the United States was the real loser. This is the sad part of this uh, story here. Russia, China, Iran, and others weighed in after Biden's faltering performance let viewers stunned. Media outlets in those countries, many of which are government-run, seized on the debate debacle to criticize the U.S. Every outlet, big and small, carries a piece describing what happens, says Rebecca Koffler, a strategic military analyst and author of Putin's Playbook. She told Fox News Digital, some have more than one. Most of them, if not all, are derogatory of both candidates and mocking America. Again, that's the pieces that are written and broadcast about what happened at the debate. What Russian President Vladimir Putin is seeing is that the American society is deeply fractured and consumed by its own problems, Koffler said. Putin likely believes that Russia wins either way, no matter who wins, because he expects the U.S. to be plunged into chaos in the aftermath of the elections because the country is so divided and polarized. Bottom line, Moscow feels confident that the, soci that the societal crisis that has engulfed the U.S. is good for Russia, she added. Now, the Kremlin spokesman, Dmitry Peskov, claimed that Putin was too bored to wake up and watch the U.S. debate, but said, we have seen media reports about these debaters. He added that the Kremlin has made no attempt to assess the debate or make official conclusions and insisted that Russia has never interfered in the election campaigns of the American of, of the United States. Outside of the Russian media, uh, it's been reported they've touted the advantage of the debate as a victory from Russia, outside of the Kremlin, that is. Putin positioned himself to dictate terms in the war in Ukraine, especially if Donald Trump were to win the White House. They highlighted Biden's half-open mouth, unblinking eyes, and blank expression on his face. This is how Joe Biden appeared before an audience of millions, Russian state TV, New York bureau chief Valentin Bogdanov said on Kremlin-backed RT. The news report especially focused on the reaction from CNN, calling the anchors powerless and the Democratic Party in the throes of deep panic, according to East to West. And that's one of the uh, media outlets. All right. So this is not surprising. What We all saw this. And, um, you know, no one's going to say we can't believe our eyes and you can't excuse it. Well, he had a cold or he was not feeling that well or whatever. Um, you know, we see what we have seen over the last few months that he's a deteriorating human being. Now, again, there's this happens to 81-year-olds. This is not his fault that his health is deteriorating. Whose fault it is, the people that are keeping him in power because we have become and remain a laughingstock now around the world. Now, headline number two, which emphasizes this, is from the Wall Street Journal. The world saw Biden deteriorating. Democrats ignored the warnings. The loudest public alarm about Joe Biden's mental acuity came in February. Remember that story? From the release of special counsel Robert Hur's report, a document he produced after spending five hours interviewing the president that revealed Biden displayed significant memory problems. Democrats worried. Then most of them followed the president's lead and dismissed it as a partisan hackery. 
Biden's closest advisors definitely beat back suggestions that the 81-year-old president showed signs of decline. Well, minutes into the Thursday night's presidential debate, the concerns became gushing into the open, yet they were already be had already become apparent outside of Washington's corridors of power and across the world for months. In interviews, top officials abroad and Democrats say that they've witnessed other moments where Biden's behavior concerned them. Some were quickly relieved when Biden appeared to regain his footing. Others were left shaken by the experience. The White House did not immediately provide comment for this story. European officials has already been expressing worries in private about Biden's focus and stamina before Thursday's debate, with some senior diplomats saying that he had they had tracked a noticeable deterioration in the president's faculties in meetings since last summer. There were real doubts about how Biden could successfully manage a second term, but one senior European diplomat said the U.S. administration officials denied that there were any problems in private discussions. In other words, denying the obvious, diplomats described Biden's performance of the group of seven leaders in July, excuse me, in Italy in June as mixed, with Biden appearing physically frailer than in the past, but alert in many of the most important discussions. So, Again, whatever he has, and there's doctors, there was a UK story in the Daily Mail, a number of doctors were viewed him, and they said, we can't really make a diagnosis without, you know, examining him firsthand. Some people say it's, doctors say it may be Parkinson's, others dementia, Alzheimer's, or whatever, but whatever the case may be, he's losing it, and the whole world knows it. And uh, back in February, remember Robert Hur's story? We can't prosecute, and it was about the files that were found in, in Biden's possession after he left office which is illegal, which is a felony, actually. And her said, well, we can't prosecute the man because his, his memory just isn't there. He's just not, you know, not functioning well. Yet, supposedly, he's functioning well enough to run the free world. All right. Headline number three. After Biden's debate disaster, the U.S. allies are preparing for Trump's return. This is from the Associated Press. Observers abroad watched the first presidential debate of the 2024 general election on Thursday night on CNN, an international network, and concluded that former President Donald Trump has likely returned to office in 2025. While the first presidential debate of the 2024 race uh, dwelled little on foreign policy, analysts say Joe Biden's shaky performance will have American allies waiting for Donald Trump's return. Several Australian officials and experts attended a workshop called Trump 2.0 in Sydney, after as after the debate aired. The mood has changed considerably after the debate, and the general view is if you weren't preparing for a Trump 2-0, and this is the smart play and the smart move now. In Israel, a country with more at stake in the U.S. elections than perhaps any other except Ukraine, the left-wing Haaretz called the debate a sad night for America. Many Israeli outlets noted Trump's comments on the ongoing war with Hamas, including his statements that Israel should be allowed to finish the job, that Hamas never would have attacked in, on October 7th if he were still in office, and that Biden has become a bad Palestinian. But what grabbed the top headlines was a statement by New York Times columnist Tom Friedman, a close Biden ally, that Biden should step aside after his disastrous performance. All right, but now herein lies the problem. This is our last headline. A private call of top Democrats fuels more insider anger about Biden's debate performance. A sense of concern is growing, this is from the AP, a sense of concern is growing inside the top ranks of the Democratic Party that the leaders of Joe Biden's campaign and the Democratic National Committee are not taking seriously enough the impact of the president's troubling debate performance earlier in the week. DNC Chairman Jaime Harrison and Biden campaign manager Julie Chavez Rodriguez held a Saturday afternoon call with dozens of committee members across the country, a group of some of the most influential members of the party. They largely, this is the leadership, ignored Biden's weak showing Thursday night or the avalanche of criticism that followed. Multiple committee members on the call, mostly, mostly granted anonymity to talk about the private discussion, described a feeling like they were being gaslighted that they were being asked to ignore the dire nature of the party's predicament. The call, they said, may have worsened a widespread sense of panic among elected officials, donors, and other stakeholders. Instead, the people said Harrison offered what they described as a rosy assessment of Biden's path forward. The chat function was disabled, so there were no questions allowed. All right, so uh, uh, one person says, I was hoping for a more substantive conversation. Hey, let's get out there. And instead of, hey, let's get out there, just be cheerleaders. All right, here's the problem. Many donors, party strategists, and the rank-and-file DNC members are publicly and privately saying they want the 81-year-old 
Biden to step aside and select a younger replacement at the Democratic National Convention in August. As of now, Biden's closest allies insist he remains well positioned to compete against, compete against Donald Trump and give no indication they will push him to end his campaign. All right. And many are anxiously awaiting the first major round of post-debate public polling to determine their next steps. All right. So where we have all this, this is this is what's important for us with respect to last day's Bible prophecy, because that's what we do here on Breaking News every day. We look at the events of the world and how they fit with what the Bible says the world will be like in the last days. Now, according to Scripture, uh, the U.S. is no longer a superpower in the last days. And that's where we're at right now. In the eyes of the world, we're not a superpower. Uh, this precisely fits sign 11 of our 25 signs. We're near the end uh, where we talk about no one, will, no superpower will intervene on Israel's behalf when they are invaded. According to Ezekiel 38, 39, something will happen to the United States. In other words, we are conspicuous by our absence. Why isn't the United States a player? Why doesn't anyone come to the aid of Israel when they're attacked by Russia, Iran, Turkey, and all these other countries? And the point we continue to make, we made it for a number of years, is that the United States has lost its superpower status at this time, either cannot or will not be able to respond. And also what's fascinating, too, when this leader, Putin, well, let's take Putin, but let's say Russian leader, uh, has this evil thought to invade Israel in the last days, there's no second thought at all about someone coming to the aid of Israel, some superpower, you know, fighting back this in invading horde that's coming from the north, south, east, and west. So in other words, the United States, conspicuous by its absence, isn't a player. And that's what we've concluded years and years ago. Now, in the past, particularly before the 2020 the election, uh, we, it, that was hard to see with Donald Trump and the United States looking powerful around the world. Then, of course, the last four years has been just the opposite, as we see right now, as this story uh, prevails. All right. So here's here's where we're at. We don't know what's going to happen with Biden, with the Democrats, but we do know this. They are in chaos. They are in denial. The world is just shaken up by this. But it's like we've said in these other stories, the enemies of Israel and the enemies of the U.S. We have to be worried about Iran, Russia. What will they do? China, what will they do in the meantime? Because you have a president where the lights are on, but no one's at home. And um, there's an opportunity, a short window, especially if they feel Trump is going to be elected in in. November. And then anyway, that's only four months away. If that takes place, then uh, they have a short period of time to do some very provocative things with no real pushback because there's no leadership in the U.S. So again, we pray, we wait and see, and um, we're brokenhearted by all of this, but certainly not surprised. And again, if you're new to us, because we get a lot of new people joining every day, new subscribers to our, our YouTube channel, we have a website, Educating Our World, where we have 65 books that deal with the, what Christians believe, why we believe, and how to live it on our website, Educating Our World, 12 on Bible Prophecy, thoroughly explaining what the Bible says will happen at the time of the end, especially in our book, 25 Signs, we're near the end. Everything is free. We charge for nothing. We, charge, we don't ask for money. We don't charge for um, any of this. We uh, give this to you. This is our ministry. This is what we do. So if you can... Um, you know, read, study, and know what's going on, it will certainly be a comfort to you, because the last thing we want is uh, disillusionment and discouragement from people looking at the world and, and having people saying, well, Christ is coming back tomorrow, this or that, when we really don't know the time. Anyway, we'll continue on with these stories, and only God knows what's going to happen here. I'm Don Stewart. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next time, later today, may the Lord richly, richly bless.